This week will be dominated with headlines such as First Republic went into receivership and maybe they get a buyout, maybe they're left to the wolves. That will affect this market. The economic data that we get this week will affect this market. Fed Jerome Powell will affect this market. And Apple has the power to single-handedly push the markets up or down into a brand new bull market or into a brand new bear market. With all of this noise happening in the markets, AMC stock is no stranger to that said noise. AMC stock is very much in a place of limbo with a slight bullish uptrend heading into their earnings coming on Friday. And we'll talk about what historically happens with AMC. You do, fun fact, tend to rally sometimes before earnings, but usually after earnings. And this earnings is going to be a lot more important than your average earnings with AMC. So we're going to get into all of that and what this means for this upcoming week with AMC stock and my personal opinion where I think AMC stock is going to go. Keep in mind, I do have trades on this. The risk to reward looks very nice with AMC with the options as well as diamond handing the shares. That's that's the key here. I don't think there is a, 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 a trade necessarily with the with the shares i don't want to buy in here i don't want to sell out here i want to buy and hold and accumulate until the ultimate moas does happen but you can get some sweet sweet leverage with some of those options not financial advice obviously options can and most of the time do go to zero so keep that in mind now let's get into all of this key information if this is your first time here ladies and gentlemen my name is tci the creative investor whatever you want to call us we keep you up to date with what is happening in the markets we're talking broad economic data we're talking the fed we're talking recession not recession earnings all this good stuff but we also take a highlight on retail stocks such as amc that have the potential in the short mid and long term to make you a sweet bag now let's get into everything you guys need to know about this week man you just gotta sigh before you start this video because there is a lot so first things first and this is gonna be the biggest headline i think that hits tomorrow morning there has been kind of not an auction process necessarily but banks have been putting in their bids on where they would be willing to buy out first republic now first republic is in a tricky a tricky spot here because they've lost a lot of deposits they made money last quarter but the amount of deposits they are losing with their current balance sheet is not good so really what's been happening here is they bought bonds basically at the top right bond values have been falling as bond yields have been rising so they have this whole portfolio full of these bonds that they bought a lot higher than where they currently are now if they were to be bought out well those losses are going to be realized and it would bankrupt the company that's why they are being bought out because there's no survival for first republic and i say it's why they're being bought out it's because it looks like there's going to be some kind of buyout offer if there is not well, that's not necessarily going to be a positive thing. Now, if a buyout does occur, well, the markets might actually look at that as a negative thing for equities. Because keep in mind, part of the reason why the NASDAQ is up 17% since the start of 2023 is because people have been concerned that the banking crisis will cause the Fed to cut rates sooner. That is bullish for long duration equities and assets, right? Fed keeping rates higher for longer is not good. Well, if the banking crisis happens, people are like, hey, the Fed's going to cut rates sooner. This might be a bullish thing as long as it's just the regional banks. Well, if there is no more banking crisis, if First Republic gets bought out and it's over with, you didn't see enough financial stress to get Fed rate cuts. And that could be bearish since markets have been rallying why? Not because earnings are good. Not because earnings are getting better. Micron just reported their worst earnings ever. Intel just reported their worst earnings ever. Amazon says AWS is slowing down by 500 basis points in this new quarter. Apple earnings likely to be dog shit. Microsoft earnings not so great either. Google earnings not so great. You're seeing stocks that are beating one bad expectations but earnings estimates are also going lower 
The only reason markets have been rallying is because of this narrative of a Fed rate cut coming by the end of 2023. So that's going to be important. Now, circle all of that information. We just compacted a full video of information in the last about four or five minutes. Take that information with you throughout the rest of this video and feed that narrative into different data points. So the economic rundown. We're just going to give you guys the big stuff that's going to be happening. So Monday, you're not going to get too much. You are going to get, uh, let's see where we are. So that is Friday. Let's go ahead and go to Monday. You're going to get ISM manufacturing PMI. You will get a reaction off of this Monday morning, but it's not going to be likely a lasting reaction unless you're way above or way under estimates. Keep that in mind. It's all about the estimates here. So if you're expecting, call it 50 on the PMI, it comes in at 60. That's going to be really good. Vice versa. If you're expecting 50 and it comes in 40 or 30, it's way off expectations. That's what will give you a move with economic data. If it comes in in line with expectations, I would expect a pop or a drop initially, but the markets are going to eat that up either direction. Now, Jolt's job openings comes in at Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning and expecting 9.7 million. Wednesday, you're going to get ISM services PMI. You're expecting that to be 51.5. Anything above 50 is positive territory. So again, services, you need to see inflation going down. That's probably not going to be a good thing if it comes in hot. Now, Wednesday, this is the big catalyst of this week that could send stocks such as AMC, your broad markets, up or down in a massive way, and it is the Fed interest rate decision. Now, that will come out at 2 p.m. on Wednesday, so you'll be able to trade this if you would like to. It's, it's you, Hopefully, everyone will be awake by 2 p.m. Eastern time uh, to pay attention to this, and it's not important what the Fed is going to do as far as raising rates. We know they're going to raise rates a quarter percent. But it's important what their guidance is, kind of what kind of clarity they get, because the markets are expecting a pause. If the Fed says, yeah, we're still data dependent, the risks are much more to the upside that rates are going to have to go higher from here, not that they're going to be cut. That's where you'll get a negative reaction in this market, because keep in mind what we said in the beginning of this video during that crash course on what's going on right now in the stock market. Anything that pushes back that Fed rate cut is negative because stocks have not been rallying based off of good earnings. They haven't been rallying based off of earning estimates going higher. They've been rallying based off of this notion of a Fed rate cut. Anything that pushes that back is going to be the most bullish th bearish thing that you can get for this market. For this market. Now you're going to get the press conference coming at 2.30 p.m. Uh, don't be fooled off that initial move at 2 p.m. It might be really bullish. We've seen that in the past. Once the press conference comes out, all hell starts to break loose in the markets. Now, Thursday, you're going to get the balance of trade. Not a big deal at all. Initial jobless claims as well. Not a big deal because you're going to have the Fed. You're still going to be digesting that coming on Wednesday and Apple earnings as well will be a big one. Now, 830 in the morning on Friday, non-farm payrolls expecting that to come in at 190,000 as well as the unemployment rate expecting that to go down from 3.6% or 3.5% expecting that to go up to 3.6%. This will be big economic data. Um, after the fact, right after the Fed meeting on Wednesday, after Apple earnings that will come on Thursday. And that's the other story here. Now, I don't think earnings are going to give us that reaction. Earnings estimates have been going lower so much recently since the start of 2023 that companies are reporting bad earnings, like I said, and they're getting rewarded for it. So I don't really expect earnings to be a huge deal. Besides Apple, if Apple is far off the estimates, to the upside or the downside, it's going to be a very negative thing or potentially positive thing for the markets. But Apple stock has been going parabolic without any give. So you got to be a little bit careful there. Earnings rundown. You guys can see it right here. I don't want to go through all of them, but big ones such as SoFi tomorrow morning pre-market, Uber uh, Tuesday after hours, AMD and Ford Tuesday after hours as well. Wednesday, after hours, Qualcomm Thursday, you're going to get Datadog, ABM, Bev, uh, and Peloton that do report earnings in pre-market. Apple in after hours, Shopify, Block, Coinbase, DraftKings, and Lyft in after hours. And then good old AMC stock coming Friday pre-market. So why is this all important? Why do we just go through 
everything that's going to be happening that could move the markets this week. Well, AMC stock tends to lately outperform on good days and to outperform on bad days. Not trying to sound like a permable here, but if the markets are up 2%, AMC tends to be up 4 or 5, 6%. If the markets are down 1%, AMC tends to be down less than that. They tend to be positive. And I think that has a lot to do with the collateral requirements, especially on those bad days. In the broad markets, AMC is outperforming because hedge funds have to deposit more collateral into their short positions or they have to hedge out those short positions. And that is ultimately not something hedge funds really want to do. Now, a number specifically, let's switch gears to AMC and, and look at what's going to be happening as far as economic data. So the biggest number that I really want to watch right now, besides short interest and all of that, is the dollar amount that is currently sold short in AMC stock. You got about $727.5 million sold short in AMC with an estimated short interest of free flow at 26 and a quarter percent, free flow out on loan at 36%, shares out on loan 185 million, days to cover at five, cost bar rates trailing three month average at 256% and 100% share utilization so these numbers will be key why because these cost bar rates are so high the average days out on loan is over 120 days meaning that these hedge funds they paid two three four five hundred percent cost bar rates to get into these short positions if amc stock continues to rally you're gonna have to continue to see hedging for that upside move because these hedge funds are short right you can't be ultra short 26 percent short facing the prospects of the mother of all short squeezes and just do nothing you have to hedge out your positions now this is huge keep this in mind we're gonna have the special mastery that is going to be giving a recommendation to judge zern this could come at any time this literally could come right now it could come this week it could come next week or next month when that does come i think it's very clear it's going to be a bullish thing because after all the letters that have been sent are that this was not a fair vote, that we are not in agreement with the settlement. Have your own opinions on this. I think either way this goes, AMC squeezes in the end anyways. In the short term, court's going to be more effective to give you a short squeeze. Longer term, reverse split. Also, AMC raising billions of dollars of capital will give you a squeeze as well. But long story short, until we get new information from the courts, you're going to have to see shorts hedging out their short positions. They've lost three times the, the dollar amount of their positions of the amount that is currently sold short in AMC in just the last three months. Not to mention, since Q1, those were Q1 numbers that hedge funds lost due to cost of bar rates, about $2 billion, if you guys are not aware of that. They've also lost about $500 million in mark-to-market losses in equity since the start of this new year. And that's not even to mention the last couple of days that have also been very green. And AMC stock is breaking above one, these key moving averages on its way to the next stop. And the next stop, in my opinion, is most certainly, almost most certainly, keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor, so I can, I'm just going to say it for how I think it is. Don't listen to me. Don't make any trades or investments based off what I say. Random guy online, you could lose all your money. But this next resistance level is around $6 to $6.50 per share. That is not my base case because I think AMC stock is going to be kind of slow and steady for an upside move. My base case here would be uh, pre, pre earnings, right? Before Friday, before earnings. My base case is going to be around $6 per share. That's where I think AMC stock is going to go before earnings. That's going to put you at about 10% positive before earnings. Now, after earnings, that's where this could get more explosive. That's where my base case would be about $6.50 per share, about an 18% gainer on the week. Best case scenario, you could be pushing seven, seven fifty, eight dollars per share. It'd be about a 50% rally for the week to get to eight dollars per share. Worst case scenario before earnings, you're dropping back down to the 50 and 100 day moving averages, about five dollars twenty-eight cents per share. Worst case scenario after earnings, you fall about uh 10% to about $5 per share. And really, if earnings are really bad, you could fall to about $4.50 per share. That would be a drop of about 17%. Uh, so as you guys can see, I think the risks are for hedge funds to continue to get squeezed out the short positions to continue to see AMC stock rally. I, I think that's a simple truth here that there's a greater risk AMC goes higher 
then lower from here. Because after all, I mean, there's not a lot of bearish things you can say right now. Until we get new information from the judge, looks like shorts are going to continue to get squeezed out of their short positions and to have to really continue to hedge out those short positions as well. Now, before we do wrap up this video, give you guys a brief overlook at the option activity as well for this Friday. So May 5th, that expiration, you got 33,000 calls in the money, 72,000 calls out the money, 4,000 puts in the money, and 106,000 puts that are also out of the the money. So ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be the conclusion of this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section if you have not already. Now also, if you guys do not understand anything that was said in this video, if you uh, need to watch this video again, I highly, highly, highly recommend you guys do. I tend to talk pretty fast, tend to squeeze a lot of information in a short amount of time. So I would highly recommend you guys watch this video again to fully digest and understand everything that is said it will make you stronger investors and when things happen you'll be able to digest them and understand is this bullish is this bearish a lot quicker than your average retail investor so that is it thank you guys for watching enjoy the rest of your day and i will see you in the next one